House Democrats and one Republican ramping up impeachment calls after hearing from former special counsel Robert Mueller this week. Republican House Judiciary Committee member Tom McClintock joining us now. So what did you think of Mr. Mueller's statement? Uh, I thought it was uh, pedophagery. Uh, pedophagery is, uh, is an attorney whose tactics are uh, petty, uh, underhanded, and disreputable, or someone who quibbles over uh, tr uh, trivial matters. Uh, that describes Mueller's statement to a T. Uh, you know, we gave him and his team $25 million and uh, 22 months to investigate this monstrous lie uh, that uh, the, the president was a traitor and was an agent of foreign, uh, a hostile foreign government. And after all of that time, one of the most partisan investigative teams ever assembled uh, with uh, some of the most abusive prosecutorial tactics I've ever seen, uh, they came up with nothing. Uh, so now that that has been laid bare, they have to come up with a new lie, and that's obstruction. Well, good luck proving obstruction when the pr there was no underlying crime. The president gave them every document requested, over a million documents uh, uh, turned over, and even waived attorney-client privilege and executive privilege to allow Don McGahn to testify for 30 hours. Well, there's also a question of how they put the port report together. Of course, a lot of Democrats have been pouring over the report, trying to find any evidence that the president is guilty of something. Uh, but Republicans are doing the same, and, and Devin Nunes uh, used to be head of, of the judiciary, the position that Jerry Nadler now has. Um, he uh, actually oversight. Oh, oversight. Uh, forgive me. Yeah. You're right. But but he he found Devin Nunes found that that one of the references made in the Mueller report to a conversation between the president's lawyer and a lawyer for Michael Flynn was totally misrepresented in the report. It didn't give the full context. It made it seem like they were conspiring to to prevent information from getting out when that isn't at all what happened. So the way this report was put together kind of reflected. Uh, the bias of the people working for Mr. Mueller. Well, and, and, and don't forget, uh, his initial team included uh, uh, Strzok, Page, or, I mean, uh, McCabe, the, the, the very people who we are Although now I have learning to, I have to say, forgive me, but I have to hoax. say that when, when these messages between Strzok and Lisa Page were discovered, uh, he was immediately taken off the committee by oh, Mr. Oh, Mueller. Yeah, oh, oh, yes, correct, but only after they were discovered, all of these partisans, hyper-partisans, were deliberately selected for this uh, uh, investigative team. Uh, you, you, every every uh, uh, member of that team who made political contributions contributed to Clinton and the Democrats. Uh, Andrew Weissman, who was, act, who, was, who was the head of the team, was actually at the Clinton victory celebration in 2016 that turned a little sour at the end. Of, of, so, I mean, you, and, and even so, with that amount of bias, with, you know, these pre-dawn SWAT raids on individuals, uh, threatening people's relatives, setting perjury traps, after all all that, they could not make a case for collusion, and the only case they can even suggest for obstruction is based on the president blowing off steam behind closed doors uh, that amounted to absolutely nothing. Well, and then there's a larger question here, which is Mr. Mueller's uh, description of the way that our system of justice works. Uh, let me just play a little soundbite from his testimony or from his, his uh, uh, statement this week and get your reaction. If we had had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. We did not, however, make a determination as to whether the president did commit a crime. Now, some people say that's turning our standard of jurisprudence on its head. That is, uh, yeah. we're all guilty until proven innocent. Yeah, and a prosecutor's job is not to exonerate people. A prosecutor's job is to assemble a case. That is what he was specifically uh, 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 instructed to do. Uh, uh, if there's a case for collusion, if there's a case for obstruction, you make a re prosecutorial recommendation. He didn't do that because he couldn't do that. There is no case. Uh, and now he's coming back, dropping little innuendos and saying, oh, by the way, don't question me. Uh, well, I'm sorry, the process doesn't work that way. He's accountable for, for, for this investigation. The fact that he had sh sh showed absolutely no interest in the genesis of this hoax, the, the fact that, the, that officials at the highest level of the Justice Department, the FBI, our intelligence agents, uh, agencies were actually uh, colluding 
uh, uh, to to develop and uh, foist this hoax on the American people. You know, there were two governments that were interfering in the 2016 election. There was the Russian government, but there was also the Obama administration. Well, we're going to get a lot of. Most we are going to get a lot of information about. Maybe Mr. Mueller didn't do enough uh, diligence on that side of the story, but uh, we're going to have an IG report coming out. Mr. Uber's coming out, and of course, Mr. Barr is going to be coming out with his own report. I just want to ask you about your committee, though, which is now headed by Jerry Nadler. Jerry Nadler uh, spoke right after Mr. Mueller spoke. Yeah. It was it, it was a, a, a written statement that he didn't seem to be familiar with. He kind of flubbed some of what, what he was reading, but uh, it did seem he was asked a specific question uh, about whether he would subpoena Mr. Mueller to come before the committee, and he didn't. He seemed kind of afraid to answer. He did not answer it directly. He went back to his written statement. Uh, I'm just wondering if he's afraid that people like you will ask Mr. Mueller questions that Mr. Mueller can't answer well. Well, I, I want Mueller to testify before Congress. He's accountable for the conduct of his investigation. I'd like to know why he ignored the genesis of this hoax. Uh, I'd like to know why he uh, appointed uh, this highly uh, uh, partisan team of investigators. Uh, I'd like to know how long it took for them actually to realize there was no case for uh, uh, a collusion and why that wasn't made immediately uh, uh, known to the American people. Uh, after all, this hoax is... Not, not only did they use it to try to, to interfere with the 2016 presidential election, when they failed to do that, they've been using it for the last two years to undermine the constitutionally yeah. elected president of the United States. That's big stuff. And the fact that he was charged with investigating all that and didn't, I think he's got a lot of questions to all answer. All right. We, we have to go, so it's literally got to be a five-second answer. But the bottom line is, if Jerry Nadler is listening to you right now, you want him to subpoena Mr. Mueller. Very much, and it's his responsibility to do so, and, and it's something that he's been promising to do, so let's do it. Tom McClintock, good to see you, sir. Thank you very much for coming well, in on the weekend. Appreciate it.